Welcome to Give a Heck. I am your host, Dwight Heck, and for much of my life, lived my life in quiet desperation, wondering how I was going to pay the bills, take vacations, save for retirement, and one day wondering if I would get off the hamster wheel of life and have purpose. A life that most of society lives, which takes us to work, then home, then repeat, and pays us hopefully enough just to survive. The harsh truth that most live with more months than money and have no idea how to live life on purpose, not by accident. This ensures the mass majority are living not just financially broke, however emotionally and mentally as well due to financial pressures. In each episode, I will introduce you to thoughts, ideas, and guests that can help you to learn how you too can live life on purpose, not by accident. Good day and welcome to Give a Heck. On today's episode, it's going to be a solo episode. It's just going to be me discussing a few things that come up in conversations quite often when I'm coaching people, when I'm dealing with my clients, when I'm speaking to people, when I go to conferences, they ask about specific things that I utilize in order to keep, I guess, sane in today's crazy world where everybody has an opinion and everybody wants to force that opinion on you and wants you to live their life the way they dictate their life and don't understand you have a right to your own peace, your ability to live the life you deserve to live, to live a life on purpose. So it has been approximately two years now. It was beginning in November 2020 when I started to give a heck podcast and it has been an amazing journey so I thought I'd share on this episode again a few things that maybe can help you out too in navigating the waters the trials and tribulations of life for dealing with other individuals or groups or it could be anything you know, it could be a combination of both. You could be walking through life, dealing with an individual in a group setting and walk. And all of a sudden now you're dealing with a bunch of people and you want to know how to deal with it. Well, one of the things that I focus on, I did a vlog approximately a year ago on the 70-30 principle. And I've had many people say that I should do a podcast just in regards to that principle but I want to keep it short and sweet. If you want to work on it, it and learn how, you know, more in depth that I utilize this to, again, keep my sanity when I'm dealing with uh, people in my life, feel free to reach out to me. You can reach out to me at giveaheck.com. So the 7030 principle is basically how do I deal with life on the daily basis with individuals and how, you know, great they can be and how toxic they can be. So people in my life, it doesn't matter who they are, it can be a client, it can be friends, family, as acquaintances, it doesn't matter who it is. When I reach, pardon me, when I run into that person, whether I run into them not necessarily face to face, whether it's something that I read, whether it's something that they post as a video or it's, a, you know, again, a face-to-face confrontation where we're having a coffee and communicating. 70% of the time, I better be happy with what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing. The reason for that is if I leave that circumstance, I want to ensure that I can't wait to see that person again. And sometimes they're going to say things that bother me or that I don't agree with. And that better be 30% of the time, because if it ever gets to a point in time where it's 50-50, 50% of the time, I feel good when I see their posts, their videos, or, you know, have a um, connection with them where we're face to face, whether it's individual or in a group setting, it better not be a situation where I'm going, oh my gosh, is it going to be a good situation or is it going to be a bad situation? Am I going to feel like I'm dirty and I need to go take a shower? Am I going to feel, you know, frustrated? Am I going to feel anxiety after I speak to this individual? And again, this can apply to a group too. A group of people can all have the same mindset and how they project. And it can make you feel terrible sometimes and make you feel good other times. If that isn't in the basis of a 70-30 principle, in my opinion, 
it's time to walk away. And sometimes people say, well, how, how can you do that? Certain circumstance, I can't do that. That's my family. That's, you know, that's a long-term friend or this is an association that I have no choice but to be part of that group because of what I do and who I serve. And my answer to you for that is, well, if it's family, I do this myself quite often. If you're in a circumstance where you know that you're not sure exactly what's going to be the outcome or you're positive what the outcome is going to be because of prior experience and you know it's 50-50 or it's even worse, that you just have a hard time being around those individuals or, or an individual, time yourself out of that circumstance. What do I mean by that? Go to the event, spend very little time there. Well, that's hard to wait. How do I do that? Well, let's say the event starts at five o'clock, show up at 430. Do your, you know, visiting, be polite, break bread with the individuals that, you know, cause you strife in your mental mindset. Stay for a half hour, hour after you've broken bread and leave. Keep it short and sweet. I found the more that I do that, the more that I do not get into circumstances where things are said or, you know, I hear things from others that irritate me and create anxiety and make me wish that I was, you know, gone. So I make sure that it's a pleasant experience by controlling my time so that at the end of the day, I still get to see the individuals that I do want to be around because, again, it, it doesn't mean everybody in the group can be bad of your family. There might be just one individual that rubs you the wrong way. So you literally spend time with everybody. Everybody gets to um, communicate with one another. It doesn't have to be a long period of time. And then you leave. And that's the way that I deal with family. I literally um, do that with also with groups of friends where some of the friends I love being around, but there's the odd person or maybe two people that just irritate me and I really don't want to see them. So they're falling into the category of 50-50 or less. They're not falling into the 70-30 principle. They're not people I can't wait to see again. They're people that I can't wait to run away from. So again, I do it in a very controlled way, how I spend time with these individuals. So the 70-30 principle 70% of the time, again, as a recap, when I'm around people, when I read their posts, when I watch their videos, 70% of the time, what they say, what they present, their tonality, what they project has to make me feel good. It has to make it so that when we walk away from one another and that connection, or even if there wasn't a connection, I want to be able to, uh, you know, feel that, hey, I can't watch, wait to watch one of their videos again on social media. I can't wait to read their posts. I can't wait to read their emails that they send out. But if 70% of the time I don't feel that and I feel gross, you have to ask yourself, how can I fix that circumstance? Well, you separate yourself. You're not 70-30 anymore. Now, again, 30% of the time, if you know, we don't agree or it's something that kind of irritates me. I put it in perspective and I think to myself, and it doesn't take long to think about it. How many times have I been around these individuals or this individual where I feel good and I leave the circumstance, can't wait to again, see them, talk to them, listen to them, read their stuff, watch their videos. The list goes on whenever it comes into contact with that individual in regards to what they present to the world. Again, whether it's face to face or in print or in audio or video, it doesn't matter. I better feel I can't wait to see that individual or individuals again. And again, once in a while, it's not going to be perfect. If people feel that way about me. I guarantee there's times they were so happy to see or hear from me. And other times they're like, oh my gosh, you know, what's that guy? What's that guy thinking? And that's fine. I, that's fine. I have no problems with that. I'm not perfect. They're not perfect. But again, the people I hang out with and choose to hang out with, I don't care if it's friends, family, clients, they better 70% of the time make me feel glad inside my heart warm, my brain, you know, not feeling clouded and frustrated or feeling, you know, anxiety so that I want to move on. 
and continue to move on in that relationship. So that's the 70-30 principle in a nutshell. Hopefully that makes sense and you start to apply it. It will make your life way better. Another thing I wanted to discuss is people ask me, how do I deal with, um, you know, bad moments in my life? What I mean by that, I don't have bad days. I've been focusing and working on this for a long time in my life now. I don't have bad days because that's a choice. Think about it. Whenever somebody says to you or you say to others, let's say it's late in the afternoon and you have something that happens, a bad moment, and you say to people, I've had a bad day. Really? Honestly, you've had a bad day? What happened earlier today? Your morning. What was your morning like? What was your you know, initial part of your afternoon like? And I literally will have conversations with people or I have this conversation with myself. If I find myself in my mindset slipping into thinking I'm having a bad day and I have gratefulness, gratitude for the fact of what's happened the rest of the day. Maybe I got up, up and had a good conversation with a client. Maybe I interacted with some great social media posts. Maybe it was something that's happened with a client where it just, it was a fantastic moment. Maybe I had a great, you know, whatever. Maybe I ended up having to, and I, I went to an event during the day and it was really uplifting and I learned a lot. Well, then fast forward to later in the afternoon, I had a bad call with a client. I had one of my children call me and they were having some, you know, strife in their life, some trials and tribulations. And it puts me into a funk. And immediately society, you've heard it time and time again from what we watch, what we do in life, who we communicate with. They say, I've had a bad day. No, you haven't. You've had a bad moment and you've discounted all the other good things that have happened in your day, which does not help. And in, you need to literally understand that bad moments happen. Now, how do I deal with that bad moment? And how do I make it so it's not a bad day? I time myself out. Many people think that's kind of funny. Well, think about it as a kid. You didn't want to be timed out. As an adult, I have no problems timing myself out if I have stinking thinking. If I have the six inches between my ears cloudy and the judgment of what I'm thinking, not focusing properly on what I'm working on because of that bad moment, I time myself out. There's a process that I teach and coach people to actually be able to deal with that timeout situation. But in a nutshell, I literally pick a period of time. I time myself out. Let's say I'm sitting here. I get up and I leave this situation. I go to someplace different where it's not where that circumstance or that bad moment happened. And I literally will do different things. Some days those things will work, some days they won't. So what's the answer then? What happens if they don't work? Well, I have a numerous things, a number of things that I'll try and I literally time myself. I give myself a specific segment of time where I'm done feeling that bad moment where I actually have programmed my brain into realizing, okay, it's been X amount of period of time. You can't, you can't wallow in it anymore. It's time to move on. It's time to get back on um, the saddle and get riding into, you know, more success in my life and leave that bad moment behind. So sometimes it can be involving listening to a book because I'm a big Audible fan, listening to a uplifting podcast of people that I like. Sometimes it can be listening to music. Sometimes it can just be laying back relaxing and literally thinking to myself and having those gratitude moments and being grateful for the things that I have from the moment of getting up, waking up, being given another shot, another opportunity to succeed at life, being able to have shelter, right? Roof over my head, knowing I have food in my fridge, knowing that so many other people don't have what I have. It can be as simple as that sometimes. And other times it's a little bit more in depth. I have to actually think to myself, what happened? What put me into this funk? What did that person say or do? Or what did I say or do to get myself into this circumstance? Did I let something in my past creep into my mental mindset because of something that triggered it? 
somebody could have triggered it? Did I allow that? I have to be honest with myself and actually think what occurred, what made me get into that bad moment. And I break it down and I tell myself, you know what, if it's about an individual, I think to myself, is that individual bothered by this as much as I am? Am I allowing that circumstance of what was said or what I read or what I experienced to control me? Why am I allowing that? It's it's not worth it. They aren't thinking about it. Why am I overthinking about it? Figure out the solution to get past it. And I do. And I get back on the horse and I ride toward my future, which is a person that realizes I never have bad days. I only have bad moments. So one of the last things I wanted to talk to as well to you is associations are so key to living a life on purpose and not by accident. And what do I mean by that? It's not just associations of those that you see on a daily basis or, or people that you check out their social media or people that, you know, are in, in just in your life in general. It's not just that. Associations are about what are you watching? What are you listening to? What are you reading? What mood are you in when you're doing that and being aware of that? So if you're in a bad mood and you're, you got things going on and you're stressed out and you go put on an angry television show, you go pick up an angry book, you listen to an angry podcast of, of somebody that's always, you know, just puking all over the place because you want to commiserate and you want to feel worse. That's never going to help you out in your life. You need to, when you're having bad circumstances in life, you need to listen to things that are uplifting. You need to associate people that are positive, that are going to literally listen to what it is that you have to say, because maybe you're having a struggle at that moment and you, they can say to you, well, I understand what you're saying, Dwight. How about you look at it this way? And they know how to deliver it. They have the proper tonality. They got the right body language. They understand that you need to vent, but then they also understand that they need to help you correct your thought process. And sometimes the associations you have are going to be people that you just want them just to listen to you. And you're able to get out of your funk without them saying a word. I have people like that in my life. They just, they nod, they know what to say. They, you know, that's, they'll say the right words, not even a phrase or a sentence or a paragraph or a conversation. They just, oh, that's unfortunate. They know what to say for me to come to the realization to fix my six inches between my ears, but it all evolves around who do I associate with? What do I associate with? Again, what am I listening to? What am I reading? What am I watching? I, you know, it, you can, I literally could put on something that is completely entertainment based. It, I don't get caught up in the fact of what that show is. Too many people live and talk around the water cooler of life about, oh, did you watch that show last night? Or, oh, did you hear the news? Did you hear what's happening over in this place in the world? Or did you have hear what happened across the city that we live in? Bottom line, the news is not conducive to you being happy and having great days and avoiding bad moments because it puts seed inside your brain that is really hard to, you know, avoid. So how do you not put that seed in your brain? Don't watch the news. I don't. I do follow specific news in regards to my industry i follow um finance news and i'm a hockey fan i like watching um nhl hockey i've been a hockey fan my whole life and i'll literally um you know read about some sports but i don't read anything in regards to what's going on around the world on the daily basis guess what you don't have to because guaranteed you have people in your life that are going to share all that garbage with you and yes, it is garbage. Is what going on garbage? No, it is a reality of life. There's people out there that are terrible human beings causing terrible circumstances. 
And it doesn't even have to be just individuals. It can be our governments. It can be the companies that are in our lives causing strife for us. But bottom line, you have a choice what you feed your brain and you need to start feeding your brain 99% of the time positive things and hang around 99% of the time positive people that yes, they have moments just like I do and you help and you allow that person to vent. They allow you to vent if you're having circumstances or trials and tribulations and they turn around and help you climb and continue to get out of that circumstance. And you do the same when it's required for them. That is a good association. That is somebody you want in your life, in your tribe, and in your extended family. I hope that makes sense. And I just want to say thank you to all the listeners that I've had over the last um, two years. It's put my podcast in the top 5% of podcasts that are listened to in the world. It's pretty good. I really appreciate it. And, you know, how can you help me out? By sharing my podcast with your family and friends and work associate associates, part of me, um, and giving them the opportunity to listen and learn from the great guests I have on so that they can continue to climb in life or if they're camped right now, maybe it'll be enough for them to stop being camped in their mental mindset in their life and start climbing toward a more purposeful, happy life. Again, I appreciate you sharing this and continuing to share it. If you, you know, enjoy my show, I'd really like you to go and rate my podcast and rank it. You can do that at going to www.ratethispodcast forward slash give a heck. I'll say that again, www.ratethispodcast forward slash give a heck. And if you go to that on your computer or on your phone, it'll automatically know what podcast um, platform you listen to podcasts on. And you can literally rate my podcast. And why is that important? It helps the show get out to more people. It gets um, presented to more people on the different podcast platforms when people rank and review it. And I really appreciate your time listening to me. And if you have any comments and questions, please reach out to me. You can get a hold of me at www.giveaheck.com. And I look forward to sharing more over the next you know, weeks, months, and years in the Give a Heck world. God bless you all. Peace out. Stay out of trouble. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you for taking time out of your day and listening to Give a Heck. If you find value, I'd appreciate you sharing with your friends and family so they too can learn how to live life on purpose, not by accident. So you do not miss the next episode. Please subscribe on your favorite podcast platform and please also post a review. I look forward to reading your comments. This has been Dwight Heck. If you want to check out other podcast episodes or today's show notes, please check out my website, giveaheck.com and until next time together let us all strive to give a heck